Please welcome Leighton Live, Kevin and Chris Hitchcock Drive. I think that we have gone off air, so this is not now live. Um, and I didn't need to say that. OK, hello. <laughs> Your votes have come in. Oh, hang on. Have I got the vote from my mum? I have. Oh, she voted for the other one, which means that the winner, the one that you wanted to see the ending of, is a producer's tale. <laughs> testing, testing. Um, Dan's just pitched me his idea. Um, words can't express what I feel right now, and I've got to give him an answer. Well, Tara, what did you think? As a plus point, it seemed an original and risky sitcom idea. Excuse me, how many radio and television programmes have you made? None. <laughs> yeah, and how many pints of bitter do you think I've poured? None. That's why there are job titles. Stuck up cow. <laughs> Go clean your pipes! <laughs> Tara, what did you think? Well, um, it's a unique pitch. I mean, I've never had an idea like it. I mean, I must be going. Happy birthday! <laughs> Wait! Oh, oh. Please. Which bits did you like? Please, oh. your feedback is important. Um, Tara, have we got the next weakest link? We've got the next weakest something! <laughs> Which bits did you like? Um, oh, some... some bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> what about me and Matthew Kelly playing the two racist twins? Would that work? Maybe. Yeah, on, on radio. <laughs> what about the comedy corner shop owner? A comedy corner shop owner? Yeah. I mean, the fact is, he likes Matthew Kelly giving him racist abuse. And he laughs about the petrol bomb. He's a funny character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd be a white actor, blacked up, obviously. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the mix-up with Hitler's ashes and the snuff boxes, comedy gold. Um, Dan, have you written much comedy? No, I read a book. <laughs> right, um, I'll be honest. Your idea scared me. <laughs> when you explained it was a cross between my family and Romper Stomper, I felt this sudden need to urinate. <laughs> and it's not because I've got a weak bladder or anything. I was scared. <laughs> Anyway, in a nutshell, um, I don't think a knockabout comedy about two racist skinheads is exactly what ITV is looking for at the moment. They've already got Barbara. <laughs> Not that that's about fascists, but it does represent a long-term, serious commitment. Oh. I don't have to be in it. We could get Robson Green. Also, <laughs> what's funny about sending hate mail? It has hilarious consequences. <laughs> Which are? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Dan, I'll be honest with you. I hate your diseased mind and your awful idea. And I'm leaving now. Right, that's it. I can't take any more. Look what you've done. He's gone to the toilet to top himself. He did that earlier. Oh, see what you mean. Um, <laughs> Look, um, I don't care anyway. Look, there's my card. Give me, give me a call when you've mocked him up. And um, <laughs> I'd really like to talk to you about your idea, the EastEnders one. I'm thinking six 30-minute episodes. We'll put it on straight after EastEnders. Obviously, we'll have to lose a makeover programme, but they're all crap anyway. Yeah. So, uh, uh, have another card. <laughs> Let's do lunch. Oh, there you go. <laughs> have another card. <laughs> That was your winning sitcom, A Producer's Tale. We're going to be back next week with the television drama workshop versus A Tale of Repressed Homosexuality with Jimmy James. Can't wait. Let's hear it again for all the actors, all the writers, but chiefly yourself. See you next time. Thanks. Good night.
and you were